here at the Dark Room Gallery for the Beefcake Babylon exhibition of Italian gladiator movies with our curator David Delvano. Welcome to Beefcake Babylon and for our first exhibit I want to draw your attention to Sign of the Cross. This was done in 1932 by Cecil B. DeMille and it was considered then as it is now the absolute zenith in uh, pre-code debauchery you have Charles Lawton playing Nero, and with him is his boy toy, a well-oiled Nubian. Here is his queen, Claudette Colbert, who takes a bath in ass's milk, and then insists one of her slave girls join her for kind of a lesbian romp. This is all before the code kind of brought it all together. And DeMille relished in showing you all the sins you weren't supposed to indulge in and all the commandments that uh, you weren't supposed to break yet he broke them all and had a ball doing it and this I've always considered the grandfather of all sword and sandal films all of these bodybuilders that got into sword and sandal films were all part of the physique physical culture magazine craze that was in the 1950s and we all remember the ads that you used to get saying uh, being at the beach and being very skinny and having a muscular guy throw sand in your face and you go away to Charles Atlas and you come back and you're all pumped up and you you know beat him up and the girl is yours and well that was the myth and these physique magazines kind of bought into it and it was physique poses like this of Ed Fury and Richard Harrison that kind of allowed uh, the Italian filmmakers to create new images of the ancient gods of Rome and of Greece through these physique ads. And here of course is the most the most famous and the greatest of all the sword and sandal actor Steve Reeves who is without doubt the most iconic the most beautiful looking and the greatest of all the sword and sandal actors Hercules himself. We have Reg Park who was second only to Steve Reeves he won the Mr. Universe title three times and here he is in a scene from Hercules and the Haunted World by Mario Bava who had just made Black Sunday and then made this film with Christopher Lee and the man who would replace Steve Reeves as Hercules. So a lot of these films they had more than just muscle men, there were supernatural overtones. Yes, a lot were... of these movies incorporated the horror cinema, uh, the western in some cases, the, the revenge film, uh, classical drama, you know, doing Jason and the Argonauts, doing Medea, doing Persephone, you know, all of the, all of the myths were fair game. And they were also public domains, so you didn't have to pay any. <laughs> this is Mario Bava's Hercules and the Haunted World, which is considered by many fans to be the greatest of all the sword and sandal fantasy films. It starred Christopher Lee, who had just played Dracula uh, a year or so before in England. Mario Bava, of course, is a legendary director of fantasy films. And Mario Bava had also been the director of photography on the two Hercules movies that Steve Reeves made. So this is the German poster for Hercules in the Haunted World. And as you can see, here's uh, uh, Reg Park being menaced by one of the skeleton men that are brought back to life by Christopher Lee. This is our only sword and sandal poster that has a quote from the Marquis de Sade. My vengeance needs blood, says the Marquis de Sade. And Mickey Hargate as the Crimson Executioner gives it to him when he says, My beautiful body in the arms of the angel of death. My beautiful body as he oils himself up with more baby oil. And there he is as the Crimson Executioner. This is my all-time favorite. If you haven't seen this movie, go out and rent it. It's got everything, homosexuality, bodybuilding, baby oil, what more do you need? Sounds like a camp masterpiece. All right, this is Gordon Scott from a movie called Goliath and the Vampires. And here he is with the blue people. So here is a movie that incorporated not only the vampire myth, but a lot of, of fantasy elements that wouldn't be found normally in a film about the gods of Mount Olympus. Uh, here again is Mickey Hargitay with a monster from The Loves of Hercules. And this one, his wife, Jane Mansfield, plays uh, a goddess, Federico Fellini's Satyricon, which was made, you know, right after the sword and sandal boom 
of the 1960s, which ended when Clint Eastwood became the man with no name and spaghetti westerns took over and sword and sandal movies kind of disappeared. Here's Fellini directing Martin Potter. Here's a rare shot of the hermaphrodite. And here's Hiram Keller, also in Satyricon. So we went from the sign of the cross to Fellini Satyricon. Is a rare candid from the first Hercules with Steve Reeves in between shots. And here is Mario Bava, who was the director of photography and also actually did some of the directing for that and Hercules Unchained. Here's another rare shot of, of Hercules reading Variety. And my personal favorite, a signed picture of Steve Reeves with the wagon carrying the, the voice mic. And here's Mickey Hargitay when he was working as Mae West uh, from her show, which is how he met Jane Mansfield. Well, looking at all this, you'd have to say this looks like it should be a chapter of the Hollywood closet. I think that there are many, well, Steve Reeves wasn't gay, but he had a gay following. And I think that a lot of the young guys that started watching these sword and sandal movies from the baby boomer generation, a lot of them did become gay or were gay and this kind of helped them along so yes closets were opened and in some cases closets were shut but here at Beefcake Babylon all our closet doors are wide open baby so come on down and bring those Yankee dollars <laughs>